Good morning, one and all. Particular welcome to everybody in the room here with me. Lovely to see you all. But an equally warm welcome to those who are joining us online. I uh, can't see you, but welcome and thank you for joining us. Uh, this morning, our pastor is uh, not with us. He's uh, having a break. Um, so there'll be a number of us taking part this morning um, to just lead us in worship and teach us something of what our Father would say to us today. I'm going to start with uh, just a couple of verses from the beginning of Psalm 138. I will give you thanks with all my heart. I will sing praise before the heavenly beings. I will bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your constant love and truth. You have exalted your name and your promise above everything else. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased strength within me. Our first song this morning is a well-known one, Strength Will Rise. If you're able, please rise to uh, sing with us. If you'd rather stay sitting, absolutely fine. But shall we join together in this worship, please? See, Ilka now will bring the notices for us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. Um, didn't we have a lovely party yesterday for those who were here celebrating 160th birthday for Tony and Carla? It's lovely that we can use this building for fellowship in all sorts of different ways. And one of the ways in which it is used for fellowship is the... Um, ladies breakfast which will be on the 11th of may there is a sign up list um, but francis who usually coordinates the cooking will not be there 
shock horror. So we could do with some volunteer cooks and bottle washers. Um, if you think that you could help, um, if you're a really good cook, or if you are not a very good cook, but you're happy to do what you're told, um, do tell Francis or Mel, and they will uh, coordinate you to within an inch of your life, probably. Uh, the family from Dunchurch Park Hotel, um, who are recently there and who carried the cross on the Walk of Witness um, last Good Friday, are being baptised at St Peter's this morning, so remember them in your prayers. Then on Tuesday, it's Route 41 Cafe here. Um, do come and join us or invite neighbours, friends, family, anybody you can think of. It's a really nice time just to have a chat and a cup of tea and uh, something nice to go with it. And then um, if you like something nice to go with it, but the thing you want it with is your craft, do come to Cake and Craft on Friday. May I stress that men are allowed, okay? So if you want to bring your soldering or something, come and have a chat, eat cake, uh, do come on Friday morning, 10 till 12. And that's me done for the notices, but of course, Buckets. Sienna, Teddy, come and grab a bucket each. Red. Red. Okay, Sienna, have a yellow one. <laughs> and these buckets are for the building fund. If you have anything for that, raise your hand and the young people will go and uh, come and collect it. And of course, there is the box for general offering at the back. Father, we just thank you for the many blessings that you pour, pour out to each of us. We thank you for this money, Lord, that we've been able to offer back to you. We pray, Lord, that for all the gifts, both those in the buckets and those that are sent uh, via online banking, etc., Lord, that it will just be blessed in the use here by the church. Lord, we pray that you will just give wisdom and understanding in all that we do here. Father, we bless you again for what you give us, and we thank you for all that, all that you mean to each one of us, Lord. Amen. Right, those of you that are astute will have recognised what the team were playing, and so we all love that one, don't we? So again, if you're able to rise, we believe in God the Father. Let's proclaim it together. Thank you.
not nervous at all, even with the order of service in front of me. I got it wrong. Right. Thank you very much. Sue, I believe, uh, yeah, going to do the Bible reading for us. Thank you. Morning. Right, our reading today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 18, and it starts at verse 28. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, they didn't enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, what charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we wouldn't have handed him over to you. Pilate said, take him yourselves, judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfill what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say that I'm a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. Thank you, Sue. Right, we come to the all age bit. The children, if you want to come to the front, you're more than welcome because you might be able to see a little bit more easily if you do. So if you want to come and just sit at the front, you can. But if you want to stay where you are, that is fine. Okay, so this morning we're looking at truth, okay? So who can tell me what is truth? Anyone got any ideas about what is truth? Yes, can you speak up loudly? A fact that is correct. That's a good start. Who else can tell me what is truth? Very good start. No other ideas. Right, I've got down here, it's always the same. Okay, so if it's a fact that's true, it's always the same, isn't it? Okay, um, and it's something that we don't make up. It's true. We haven't made it up. It's absolutely true. And it's always the same wherever we are. Okay, so those... But I think your little definition was very good. Well done. Okay, right. So I've got some ideas about what truth is. And you have got some little cards that say truth and false. And as it's all age talk, not just children, I'd be glad if you joined in, but you don't have to. Okay, don't feel pressured. So I've got a coin here. It's got heads and it's got a tails. If I flip the coin, is that a good way of telling the truth, true or false? Oh, you're very good, yes. Of course, it's false, isn't it? It's false. It's absolutely, it's luck. It doesn't reflect what the truth is at all. Okay. In this country, is this true or false? We spend over £13 billion on um, sweets and ice cream. True or false? Yes, it's, it's true. It is true. Okay, we actually spend £13.41 billion, pounds, which is an awful lot of money. Oh, I think it's an awful lot of money. Okay, next one. Okay, I've had an egg here. Okay, is there someone who would like to come and check? I'm going to spend... Sophie, would you like to come and check? No? No, so you, no. Go on then, come on, Seth. You come and check out what I say is true. Oh, hmm. Yeah. Okay, if I 
So if you like to come here so people can actually see, if I spin this egg, so I'm going to spin the egg like that, and then I'm going to put my finger on it and stop it, if I take my finger off, will it start going again? True or false? Uh, so, I'll sp right, if I put my fingers on it, will it start going again? You have to say true or false. A little bit more undecided. Oh, we've got a lot of false there. Right, would you like to come and put your... F so, spin it now, put your finger on it. Take it off. Did it start again? Yes, it did. Okay, you, d you can try it at home, stop it, and then it starts spinning. That started rolling, but it does stop. So, it's true, it starts rolling. Did you, did you want to say something? Oh, it's got to be a raw egg. Yes, it's a raw egg. Would you like to taste? <laughs> right, it's a raw egg. Okay, well done. Okay, um, thank you, Seth. Right, okay. Right, so my next one is I've got a ball here and I've got some water and I'm going to fill that up with water and I'm going to put the, that over it. Okay. Now, if I turn that upside down, will the water stay inside the... I'm going to say the water will stay inside the pot. I'm going to turn it upside down, and I'm going to see if it's true or false. A lot of true there. You've got a lot of faith in me. <laughs> so if I turn it upside down, and I'm going to take that away... There we are. Okay, so it stays in place. Okay, well done. Okay, right, next one. Okay. Right, I've got a paper clip here somewhere. Um, right, on there, so I don't lose it. Who would like to come and check this one? Come on in, up you come. Right. Um, this paper clip, if I put it in the water, will sink. True or false? It's going to sink. Is it true or false? Oh, we've got a lot of true. Okay, so you're going to tell me if it um, sinks or floats. Okay, so let's have a go. What's happening? It's floating, okay, it's floating. Okay, next one. Got a balloon here. Would you like to stay? I've got another thing for you to do. I've got a balloon here. If I, or oh, what's your name, sorry? Joshua. Joshua squeezes some lemon over this balloon, it will burst. True or false? Got some trues, got some falses. Oh, we're a bit divided on this one. It's real lemon. Right, off you go. No, of course it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't, no. Okay, right, thank you. Okay, right. Okay. Okay, so we've had some true and falses. Another one. Three wise men showed up at the stable. True or false? Good mix. Okay, good mix again. It's false, okay? Scripture actually says they, um, on coming to the house, they saw the child, Jesus. They, of course, it told you earlier in um, Matthew 2, that were the magi or the wise men. So they, it doesn't tell us how many there are, and it doesn't say they came to the stable. It says they came to the house, okay? So that was false. Okay, right, another one. Money is the root of all evil, true or false? Uh, well, you're better at that one. Okay, yes, that is false. Okay, scripture says the love of money is true, uh, okay, is the root of all evil, and that is true. Okay, God's word says... All your words are true. All God's words are, is true. And God's words are in the Bible. And so, um, God's word is the safe place 
that we can come to, um, that we know that everything is true in the Bible. It tells us all the wonderful things God has done for us, how he's forgiven us sins, how he's paid the price for our sins in Jesus. Um, it's got lots of promises that he's with us always and he will help us when we need him, if we ask him. There's lots of things that are true in the Bible. But we need to know the Bible if we're going to claim those promises or be assured of them. And sometimes we can get things wrong, like the wise men or um, not knowing the love of money. So we must read our Bibles, boys and girls. Okay, and I'm pointing at me as well as you. We need to read our Bibles or get mummy to read our storybooks or whatever you actually do to learn about God's word. Okay, and that's pointing to me as well as you because we need it and then we get to know God better because his word is truth and we know all the wonderful things that, about him that are true. Right, okay, so we're going to just pray now for the children and then on the third song they'll go out. Okay, so let's pray for the children. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the children we have here. Thank you that your word says that you love the children and that you encourage them to come to you. We thank you that each one of them is precious to you. We pray for them as they go to Sunday school later and that, that you will just speak to them in their hearts. We just pray that you will confirm that truth to them in their hearts. Be with the Sunday school teachers. Thank you for the time they've spent preparing. And I just pray that you would enable them to communicate to the children. Pray that your spirit will be with them all. Amen. Amen. Right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to sing three songs. And on the third song, can the children go out? The third song is Shine, Jesus, Shine. So as soon as that one starts, can the children go out? Thank you. Can you stop?
would help. Okay. sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king
sit down, please. Lovely to sing about God's glory and about Jesus shining and our, his presence reflecting in our lives. Um, we're going to pray. As we came to prayer, I thought, what can we pray? Um, we've had serious news overnight. Fortunately, it wasn't as bad as it is, and I've got no comment on it at all because I'm not political in any way and I don't understand these things. Fortunately, God's word gives us prayer for every op every occasion and I thought what we'd do is we'd say the Lord's Prayer together and in it particularly the phrase thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and I'm sure that is the desire of every one of our hearts and so I think we just pray that simply and we'll pray for Francis as he comes to open up God's word to us as well okay so shall we say the Lord's Prayer our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, we just thank you that we know that yours ultimately is the kingdom, and we thank you for that. We'd pray for Francis as he um, comes and opens up his word to us. I pray that you would speak to our hearts through it and give us insight. Amen. I'll answer the question that I know a lot of you have been asking for quite a while now. It is tea, honest. It's my Celtic genes. I can't go more than 40 minutes without a bit of the Camilla Sinensis. Right. The mic sounds knocking, isn't it? Yes. That's, uh... Better? What would you like me to do, Sam? <laughs> Don't touch the music stand. Right. So, now, now th th this, is, this goes back to a conversation I had with Seth a few weeks ago where we, we, we decided that paper is so 2010. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put all my sermons on my iPad in future. So, uh, good morning. And uh, thank you to Ali for asking me to, to step into his very ample shoes this morning whilst he and Gillian have some well-earned R&R. And thank you to Sue for this morning's reading. So let's start with a prayer. Father, as we are about to study your word, we pray that your message will find its way into our minds, onto our hearts and onto our lips. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as you've already worked out today, it's all about one question. And that question, of course, is quid es veritas? The question Pilate asked Jesus before handing him over to be crucified. Quid es veritas? What is truth? Now, I know Easter Sunday was two weeks ago, and I still want to go through this because I have two reasons in revisiting this passage from John's Gospel. First of all, so much happens in the lead up to Easter Sunday that there isn't always time in the normal course of events in Holy Week to really take it all in. And my second reason for wanting to examine this text is that it's 2024. Quid significatio MMXXIV, I hear you all asking. Or what's the significance of 2024 if you prefer? Sorry, my, my Latin never did run to numbers. Um, well, this year, 2024, it's estimated that half the people on the planet will take part in some form of general election. 
And in a world increasingly dominated by unregulated social media posts and artificial intelligence, being able to distinguish truth from lies has never been harder. And that's assuming, of course, that the elections are free and fair to begin with. The Economist Democracy Index estimates that less than 8% of the world's population lives under a full democracy. Or as the late Sir David Frost once said, in certain countries, when they call a general election, you already know which generals are going to be elected. But fear not, I'm not going to break my golden rule of preaching today. That rule being no politics in the pulpit. I am struck, however, by the parallels between today's attitudes and exploitations of truth with what motivated Pilate to ask Jesus, what is truth? You see, for years I read this quote from Pilate thinking he was just being sarcastic. Why? Well, as a Roman governor, he would have seen firsthand politics played at its very worst. There was a justification for everything even the most heinous of acts, as long as the person making that justification had sufficient power and authority. And just to make sure that you had supreme power, as the emperor, you could just self-identify as a god, and that was, made everything all right, didn't it? It you allowed you to get away with every crime known to man, and then some. Even the Roman commoner had a get-out-of-jail-free card. When traveling across the Roman Empire, safety was said to be guaranteed to anyone who declared civis Roman as some. I am a citizen of Rome. I suppose the modern equivalent would be for a celebrity to say, don't you know who I am? So in the Roman Empire, truth was a currency that, at best, fluctuated in value, if indeed it had any value at all a bit like today's cryptocurrencies. As governor of Judea, Pilate was constantly being asked to deal with conflicting truths. The emperor expected him to impose and maintain Roman law and order on a people who had their own laws and customs that had served them perfectly well for 3,000 years. Surely, we declare, with our 21st century sophistication, why couldn't he just say to the Jews, well, that's your truth and this is my truth? Sorry, Oprah, not an option. And now here comes another rabbi. Only this one says both sides are wrong. That the kingdoms and customs of this world aren't so important anyway. Jesus says to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. In just 30 words, Jesus whips the carpet from underneath the Romans and the Jewish authorities with two sentences. Today, we would call this reframing the debate. In other words, we've been focusing on the wrong things. This is what really matters. Here is truth. I no longer think Pilate was being sarcastic. I think this was a plea for help. The authorities had taken Jesus to Pilate for judgment, even though he hadn't broken any Roman laws. But you see, only the governor had the power to sentence Jesus to death, and that's what the authorities really wanted. Pilate was being played, and he knew it. After interrogating Jesus, he said to the crowd, I find no basis of charge against him. Pilate's outburst, what is truth, was in response to Jesus answering his previous question. You're a king then? To which Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born was to come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. This exchange echoes a conversation Jesus had with his disciples in Matthew 16. You see, Jesus didn't recruit people by saying, don't you know who I am? I'm the son of God. No, instead, he led by example. 
Then eventually, he asked his disciples, who do you say I am? And then Simon Peter answers, you're the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replies, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. Today's influencers, many of whom call themselves creators, can you believe it? No, neither can I. They seem to say, follow me. Why? Because I've got loads of followers. The very definition of a modern celebrity is someone who is famous for being well-known. No, Jesus' way was to be the Son of God and let others, having witnessed his works and examined his words, like Pilate and the disciples, work it out for themselves. Jesus is the truth. Truth in action, the living truth. But why does Jesus want us to find him, discover him in this way? Why not just declare, I am the son of God, follow me. Well, God's kingdom is built on love. And if he had wanted us to be robots, that's how he would have made us. You know the sort of thing, like those cyber pets, Tamagotchis or robot dogs. Yes, they'll do what you want, as long as you program them properly. But that is not love. Just hours before he was arrested and was sent to Pilate, Jesus said to his disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Surely that's the whole point. Yes, Jesus died so that we might have eternal life, but we have to claim that for ourselves. We have to find the path to the place that has been prepared for us in heaven. We have to seek, see, and choose that way for ourselves. I am the way and the truth and the life, says the Lord. So what's the significance of truth in 2024, I hear you asking. I didn't ask in Latin this time. Well, with disinformation, gossip, conspiracy theories and so-called alternative realities running rampant across the internet and spilling into our everyday lives like an ugly stain, we face a big challenge in holding on to the truth, let alone sharing it with others. And now artificial intelligence can create images and mimic our voices so well that even the old adage that seeing is believing can no longer be taken for granted. All of these tools, of course, are just what the devil's been looking for. To rewrite history. To get us to doubt everything we've ever been told. While still pretending, of course, that he doesn't exist. By creating new speak. Oh, it seems harmless enough when it starts out. But the egg that represents the empty tomb becomes the chocolate egg that the special bunny lays once a year in Granny's garden. And Easter is quickly rebranded as spring break. Oh, and if anyone mentions Jesus, well, that's just a fairy story told by cranks, isn't it? I wonder what the Christian founders of Fry's, Cadbury's, and Roundtree's would make of today's celebrations. No pun intended. So we have to be on our guard when language is rewritten or religious symbols are repurposed to be more inclusive be it the rainbow of the covenant in Genesis or the cross of St. George in the book of Nike. Done with, the intent, done with intent or out of ignorance, these actions have consequences. So if people are looking for more inclusivity, and why not, perhaps we should do more to remember, practice, and share John 3.16 the very core message of our Christian faith. For God so loved the world, not a selection, the world, that he gave his one and only son that 
whoever, again, no pre-qualification, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Never lose sight of those words, whoever believes. Christianity is not a closed shop. It's a loving community, not a cancel culture. God's love is available for everybody. Now I have a question for you. What do these three things have in common? Windrush, Hillsborough, and the post office. Well, I guess most of you will know that these are all examples of injustices that have happened over the last 35 years. Innocent people wrongly accused of actions they didn't commit, only for layer upon layer of lies to be subsequently laid upon them in order to protect the guilty. The good news is despite all the odds, having to fight complex systems and establishments, in each case, truth eventually won through. Now we can argue until the cows come home as to the speed and scale of the redress and reconciliation, and there's still a long way to go for many of these people. But that's not my point. What these three massive cases prove is something of the nature of truth. It's a superpower. It's indestructible. Jesus is the truth. As S.M. Lockridge reminds us in his wonderful sermon, that's my king. The Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. The witnesses couldn't get their testimonies to agree. And Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave could not hold him. Truth will always come to the surface. So let's bring this all together and see where it takes us. Number one, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There can be only one truth, as Jesus tells us. No one comes to the Father except through me. And truth is is indestructible. It is filled with resurrection power. Now finally, and without wanting to sound too much like Rob Bryden, well, how do we spot a lie from the truth? Well, let me tell you something I learned in my practice in reputation management over five decades. Those who lie typically will display three characteristics called the three Ds. Deny, delay, and deflect. Deny. It's not true. It wasn't me. I've done nothing wrong. Delay. I'm surrounding myself with lawyers, and I will come and explain everything eventually. They never do. Deflect. Look at him. He's doing something far worse. This is often accompanied with a lot of name-calling. Now compare these three characteristics with those of an honest person who makes a genuine mistake, the three A's. Accept, apologize, and act. Accept, you take responsibility for your actions. Apologize, you say you're sorry. By the way, the lawyers tell you that's an admission of guilt. It's not and never has been. Act, you take steps to right the wrongs, putting the needs of others before yourself and your organization. So as we head into an election year, whether you're examining a political candidate or just your own conscience, ask, are you an A or a D person? Truth always comes to the surface. In the words of the local playwright, truth will out. Thank you for listening. Now let's pray before we sing our final hymn. Father, thank you for your son, the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you that truth will always overcome evil. And as we wait for truth, let us remember the words of your servant Paul, who wrote in his letter to the Romans, we glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, 
and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out on, into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Amen. Now, as we wait for truth to conquer, Psalm 46 calls upon us to be still and know that I am God. So let's have one final song, which is Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. Thank you, musicians, and thank you to everyone who's worked so hard to put together today's service. And brothers and sisters, you've been a blessing to me today, so let's close with a blessing for you from the book of Numbers. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord face, turn his face toward you and give you his peace until we meet again. Amen. Service is now ended, but the best bit is still to come. Do enjoy tea and coffee. Thank you. <laughs>